Elon, how are you? Good, Mario. Yeah, it's been quite a, these are tumultuous times, wild times indeed. As you just mentioned, when there's an account with a large number of followers that is restored to the system, you have to re-knit the thing together. So that takes several hours. So Alex's account should be working. And Alex, you know, I, look, I honestly don't know, don't really know you and you don't know me, but you know, I, one of the questions I really have to just get out of the way, and, I, and you've probably talked about this already before, is the whole Sandy Hook thing. If somebody's sort of de denying or that murders of children, that's not cool at, at all. You know, and so just what exactly did you say and what, what is going on with that situation? You know, I just, I would like to actually hear what you, what did you say? And yeah. Well, Elon, th thank you for allowing me back into the public square so that I can actually tell the world what really happened. I don't know how much, would you like the short answer or the medium well, answer I, or the long I, answer? I think, it, I think at least the medium answer, I, I look, I guess people just want to know, like, obviously it, it would be like heartless and cruel to deny a, a, a school shooting of children or to a attack the parents or anyone who was involved, it seems that that would be, you know, just incredibly mean and cruel, fr frankly. So it's sort of, that's, I think, you know, what a lot of people are upset about, or at least they think that is the reason for you upset about sure. And, you know, I if that were true, I think we would rightly be, you know, upset with you. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, please let me then just tell you what really happened. Okay. And, and if you want me to send you a dossier with clips and videos and articles. <laughs> I mean, post this to your account, account, you know? Yes, sir. I will do that. So, so let me tell you what happened. I'm a guy that didn't go to college. I mean, a few years of community college. I started out on Access TV 29 years ago. I was not professionally trained. And by 19, by 2000, I had 30 million viewers and listeners a day conservatively. I was the biggest show, as big as Rogan is now or bigger. And I had a very small operation and did not even understand how powerful I was. And so when that event, I just call it the school shooting, which I do believe happened 11 years ago, the internet exploded and it was a top story for off and on for years with all the, with all these professors and former school safety people and, and all of them saying they believed it was a drill. And I simply covered them covering that. What was entered in court against me in, in both cases where I was found guilty by judges, there's a judge in, in, in Trump's case, not even a jury, in his real estate case. And then years later, after Trump got elected and after I was deplatformed, it made me bigger. And so suddenly I would, would wake up and there would be sometimes a hundred articles or more a day every major news channel saying that I was currently saying nobody died, currently sending people to their houses, currently peeing on graves. I didn't even know these people's names. I only said one of their names ever. Now, and, I'm, and I believe their children died and, and, and I understand okay. all that. Okay. But I'm saying, imagine I was not deplatformed, no mention of, of, of the school shooting in Connecticut for like six, seven years. Then they go back to my timeline and it turns out it was a big New York PR firm, Democratic Party. They dredge it up. They run hundreds of articles, sometimes a day, but a week for uh, over a year. Suddenly it becomes a big story again. What's the PR then firm? People, pardon me? What, what, which, which propaganda firm was this? PR, uh, PR is a public relations is a propaganda word for propaganda. So I think we should call yeah, yes. those propaganda firms because that is, in fact, what they do. So what propaganda yes, firm was this? I will find the name as soon as I'm off because I can't do today. I'm not good at doing two days at once. I can't walk into bubblegum, but I will post it to the uh, two, two X because after they got their $1.5 billion judgment and asked for $2.67 trillion, that the, the GDP of India, I'm, I'm not joking, folks, that's Bloomberg. They then came out and bragged that they had quarterbacked the whole thing. They're, they're one of the biggest, they do the UN's PR. Okay. Not quite. That, that they had quarterbacked, quote, destroying Alex Jones. And so I did question it. I did say at times I could see that, I might even say it now, they'll take it out of context and say I said it again. I did have, what they entered in court on me was 23 minutes of video and audio over five, six years. We did an audit. I hadn't talked about them when they sued me for two years. I refused to talk about it. I apologized when the PR firm got involved. And I didn't know who it was at the time. It was just all the news. I said, hey, I thought it happened. Yeah. I said it happened. I said it happened. I decided it happened five years after it happened. So I said, I'm not the Sandy Hook guy. It turns out some of these experts that said it didn't happen are crazy. They made up stuff. I said, I believe it happened. And then they spun it and said, oh, now he admits he lied about it. So it, it isn't who I was. And it's kind of like they've done with you. And you did nothing like I did. I mean, I did question it. I did say a few times that I thought it hadn't happened, but I didn't turn the knife. I didn't really think about it. I thought about how I was talking about the internet with YouTube yeah. videos with 30, 40 million views that I didn't make. Sure. 
it was a hot okay. topic th that would come back from time to time. But no, I was not the creator of it. I was not the progenitor of it. I was not the guy pushing it. And then I kept saying, no, I believe it happened. And they went, aha, you now admit you lied for money. So what's not true is I never made any money off of it. I barely ever covered it. It's not my identity. And it's just like they misrepresent what you say, take one little thing and twist it, and then say you need to apologize for it. And then they just keep hammering it and hammering it. So I've been desperately, I mean, in fact, I'll post it to X if you want. There's yeah. over a hundred apologies that I've given, over a hundred. In fact, probably 500. Every show I go on, they ask us. I apologized on Joe Rogan's show five years ago. I apologized on Patrick Ben David's show five years ago. I, I mean, these are prominent ones. I apologize sure. on every show, and I'll say it again. I apologize that I just gave my commentary, because I'm really just a guy that talk radio host. So I do that on the internet. I just take calls and interview guests. And that I play devil's advocate. And if that hurt people's feelings, I apologize. But I did not send people to your houses. I, I did not pee on graves. I, I don't know any of the stuff that went on. And then when they had the trials, after I was found guilty, trials on damages, there was never any video of people peeing on graves, any video of people at houses. There was an FBI agent who was there that day at the tragic event in New Haven, Connecticut, but Sandy, I can say the name. He was there and he didn't have an FBI vest on and his gun was pointed the wrong direction, pointed up, set it down. The internet questioned him. When he got on the stand in Connecticut, my lawyer said, has, he, has Mr. Jones ever said your name? No. Has Mr. Jones ever put your picture on the internet? No. Have any of his hosts done it? No. Has InfoWars ever put your picture out or said your name? No. What happened to you, sir? One man, he said, called eight years ago now and asked me if I was really an FBI agent. The jury gave him $94 million that doesn't exist. $94 million that never said his name. So I, I challenge people to find me say any of their names. I said one guy's name, and I apologized to him on the stand. The thing had probably 100 million views on five or six different YouTube videos of him smiling and laughing before he walked to the mic. I played the clip one time and said, yeah, that looks like he's an actor. I did not attack him, did not come after him, did not say his child didn't die. Look, I don't want to fight with him, though. I said to them in a deposition, I said, I will chop my pinky finger off with a meat cleaver right now. And I will. If you'll just leave me alone and stop saying I made hundreds of millions of dollars off of you and stop saying I'm attacking you. So, so, it's, so it's very simple. I have become, and I know what happened. The media ran a year of articles attacking them in my name saying things I never said as a straw man, enraging them against me. And then, so they've been victimized. They've been manipulated by a PR operation. And so I would love to come on X with the families. I'd love to raise money on this show or your show, Elon, or any of them. I'd, I'd love to come on here and raise them $10 million for gun safety awareness next week. I would love to, I would love to, to be in an open panel with them. I would love. Okay. Okay. It, it, it looks, it actually looks like Ed Krasnstein wants to talk. Maybe. Ed, it could be good to hear from you. Yeah, so, so I'm kind. I kind of have a question for you, Elon. So let's okay. say well, that. Okay. I mean, this well, is not an no, opportunity no. to have you me. No, it, it's it's in, in regards to Alex Jones, though. Okay. It's, re, it's related. So it, okay. let's say Alex Jones or somebody else does the same thing, but clearly, directly claims that a school shooting did not take place when we know it did. Does that future person or Alex Jones get banned, or is the new policy that they remain? We need to look at the circumstances there. Like, you know, the, 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 we're trying to follow here is to obey the law. So obey the laws of the United States, obey the laws of the countries in which X is present, and, but, and really do our best to not go beyond the law on the premise that if the people w wish the law to be different, then the people will ask their representatives or their leaders to, to change the law. But otherwise, our goal is to hew as closely to the law as possible. So if somebody says something that is unlawful, then we will take action. If someone does not take do something that is unlawful, then we would aspire to not take action. If the laws change, of course, then we will adjust our behavior accordingly. So, so that's sort of the general approach that we're taking. And now that we have community notes, which while it's not perfect, I think is it's the best fact checking that I've seen on the internet. And so if someone were to post false information, they can be community noted. And, you know, it's always important to say like, no fact checking system is perfect. If perfect perfection is the standard, you can just basically dispense with all fact checking because nothing will be perfect. But really, it's really how good is the batting average of any any fact checking system? My observation of community notes is that the the batting average, the, the, the probability that it, the note is correct, is is very high, much better than anything else that I've seen on the internet. 
and everything in community notes, the code, the data, everything is open source. So you, uh, you can independently uh, recreate the outcome of any, any note uh, as a third party. So that's it's full transparency. So I think that having the, the community notes capability is a very powerful, it's the most powerful disinformation weapon that I'm, you know, for actually combating disinformation. I mean, I agree. Yeah. Can I throw something in real quick here? Look, this is why I believe what people were saying and actually questioned and, and for a little while thought it might not have happened. We were lied to about WMDs in Iraq. We were lied to about anthrax in Iraq. There was Operation Northwoods. There was Operation Northwoods in 2000. ABC News declassified. The U.S. government planned to stage fake mass shootings and blowing up airlines with people that would take off and would land CIA, and then they would actually just blow up a drone plane and then claim a mass event had happened or claim a mass fake shooting happened. So Jesse Smollett lied about what he did. Hezbollah and Hamas, Hezbollah ran it, did kill a lot of Israelis, condemned the attack. But it wasn't true that they cut a bunch of its heads off. Even the White House and Israel has to admit that. Well, people came out and said they didn't believe that, that there was proof that Hamas cut heads off. So the establishment view was they did cut heads off. They didn't. So how do we penalize people? That I mean, if somebody wants to believe the earth's flat, they have a right to. And the community notes and everybody else can challenge them. But it's the establishment lying so much that makes people not believe anything. And then they lose faith in everything. I'm, I'm actually worried about this because a lot of my audience is yeah. so, so disillusioned. They think I'm an agent or something, too. I'm not. So, so you, you know, I don't know how we handle this, but I think the government and the media and the think tanks and the PR firms, the propaganda firms, as Elon rightfully said, have been lying professionally so much. They poison the well where no one knows what to believe. They've created a smoke screen. And so I don't know how we deal with that other than getting the community. Alex, I just want to be clear. Like, you know, Hamas does have a habit of cutting off heads. Like, it, they're quite they're, proud of cutting off heads. I, you know, it, it, this particular circumstance, perhaps there is some uncertainty, but they do cut off a lot of heads. And that, that is, there's no question about that. And they, they're quite, they appear to be quite jubilant. They're quite happy when they cut these heads off. I don't like Hamas. I, I don't yeah. like the Muslim Brotherhood. I don't like Hezbollah because that you're right. That is a hallmark. They're you're proud of cutting off heads uh, is, is yeah. my observation. No, and I agree. You know, 70 Sands, yeah. his hallmark is shooting his guns in a red beard and he's short. Hamas's calling card is cutting off heads. I totally agree. Yeah. But I'm saying they, they do that a lot. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. E Elon, do you mind if I jump and in Twitter, for a second? Twitter, no. Hold on. Yeah, go, go ahead. I'll go to you right after. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go to you right after the thing. Yeah, go ahead, the thing. I just wanted to, you know, share one thought in response to Ed's question, which is let's take the content of whatever speech it was that's issue off the table, kids being shot in schools or otherwise. I think there's two kinds of ways to worry if you're worried about the spread of misinformation or false facts. One is let's deal with the content of the speech itself. And Elon it talked about community notes as being imperfect, though it is maybe the best method out there on the internet. And I think that's one set of discussions to have. That's quite a different thing from what the law certainly looks at as the most draconian First Amendment violation, which is what it calls a prior restraint, which is to previously just restrain a person for sp from speaking, period. And I think that that is, no matter what the content of the speech is, it's quite a different thing to say that because of who you are or what you have said in the past, you may not say another thing in the future. And so I just think that those are two different concepts. And I, I just, for one, just wanted to share my experience of my Alex Jones experience, if I may. Is that, that is perfectly said. Yeah. That's because you don't cut somebody's tongue out. Yeah. Even if I did bad things in the past. And I well, but, that certainly wasn't but, but you know what? If you see, I mean, but if people say false things, they deserve to have the consequences for that particular speech aired out in the marketplace of opinions. And, you know, yeah. community notes is yes. one feature of doing that. And I think that's a legitimate discussion to have. But the idea, first of all, let's just make the observation that if, somebody has said a once said a bad thing, then they'd be restrained from speaking. Most people who have been in a position of prominence in the U.S. federal government would not be allowed to speak again in other forums right. if that was the standard was we were applying, right? I mean, you think true. about anybody who's been in the CIA or the FBI in a, in a position of saying that the Hunter Biden laptop story was false or COVID didn't start in a lab in China. So we could go down that whole rabbit hole. But, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, as Alex said earlier, I mean, and this is, I, this is not meant to be any kind of attack on George Bush, but George Bush did say, or George Bush II did say that there were WMDs right. in, in Iraq. <laughs> he said it not once, but but many times. And that's, and a lot. It's, it, that's, that's what that, it, there was, 
he did not have sufficient evidence to make the, to make that. And statement. a lot more deep people um, died as a consequence of that statement. Exactly. That Alex Jones has incorrectly. Not, but Alex, I think I, you know, Alex. I think one of the things I just wanted to share with people is that I was actually just curious about this guy, Alex Jones. You know, I'd never met him, but I happened to be in Texas. I visited the southern border, and you know, I popped in Austin on the way back, or where uh, somewhere I forget where we were, and. I heard Alex Jones was, that's where he was. I said, I want to meet this guy that everybody says don't meet. And so we sat down and I was actually surprised. And we actually aired it on X or we, or I put out clips of it on X. I can't remember on in like a podcast format. And so I was expecting to get into debate about the Sandy Hook thing. And as soon as I open up, what I get is a guy apologized for being wrong. And then we moved on and talked about something else. And so for me, it was just interesting and eye-opening. And I think it would be interesting and eye-opening for a lot of people as well to sort of know that there are people who have, who would have ever thought made some mistakes, said some things that were wrong, and said some other things that were dead right that nobody else was saying either. And the way that we get to the bottom of what's true is actually hearing one another. And, and when people say something false, yeah, they deserve to be held accountable that. for it. Exactly. So I think that's what it's, it's a cool thing that, you know, hopefully we're able to have more of that rather than less because of the existence. I mean, if this platform didn't exist, you know, that, that avenue of sorting out bad speech through more speech doesn't really exist on the internet or in our culture. And so I think that's in response to Ed, a good thing, not a bad thing in my opinion. Yeah, and, and actually to, to just to elaborate on the, the public relations firms, PR firms, which really should be called propaganda firms because that's literally, public relations is literally a propaganda word for propaganda. You can read the history of how public relations was developed. Edward Bernays. Correct. So the way that PR firms actually corrupt the media is actually in a very significant way is that journalists are, are paid very little uh, as, as journalists, but, but, but they can la later retire and join a PR firm and make a, a lot of money uh, on the basis of, their, of, the, of the articles they've written in the past and their contacts at their publication. So there is actually a strong monetary incentive, very strong for corruption of the traditional media. Elon, I'm so glad you said that because... People don't understand that's how these work. And I'm just now learning about that. The PR firms are so powerful. They're full of intelligence agency, former people. So just like a general will sign off on some bad weapon system, then he retires and gets on the major board of the defense contractor for $5 million a year. It's a revolving door. And so that's why when these big PR firms snap and say jump, the media says how high. And you're absolutely Correct. when it comes to fact checking, they're really one of the most nasty, deceptive groups out there. Yeah, they're propaganda firms. It, 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 it would just make a lot more sense if you just think PR firm equals propaganda. PR equals propaganda. That is what, literally what it means. And uh, if you read the statement- Is he dropping out, Elon? Is he dropping out? Is he dropping out for anyone else? Yeah, sorry. he's dropping off for me. Elon, you said- Yeah, yeah you just dropped out, Elon. I think you're back now. Okay, is your sorry, mic I, working? It's, it's mic, good now, it's good now. My mic is working, it's but I'm just- back. You, you were on PR I'm firms. Just, you were on PR firms equal propaganda. Yes, it, it's, the public group should really understand that public relations literally just means propaganda. PR firm means propaganda. And the PR firms have very strong control over the traditional media because that's where journalists go to retire and make tons of money. So that's, there's a very strong monetary incentive for journalists to do what the PR firms say, because they know that is where they're going to get rich in the future. Bingo. Elon, uh, a question is, is more for Alex, and Alex, me and Alex were discussing it before you jumped on, is the pressure, if any, that you've faced since reinstating, or since you said you'll reinstate uh, Alex, now, Alex, you know, kind of referred to extreme scenarios where your life could be in danger because of what you're doing with X. I know you mentioned it briefly in one of the first spaces we had. You made a joke about, hey, guys, if something happens to me, I'll never commit suicide. But how much pressure have you faced in recent months? Obviously, we've seen the back and forth with a few organizations uh, that are trying to censor others. And has that increased since you reinstated uh, Alex? I mean, I, at this point, I, reading the sort of legacy media is just depressing. Uh, I accidentally, once in a while, we'll, we'll go see like Google News or whatever, or, you, you know, Yahoo News or whatever, some sort of random thing. And I'm like, this is just, I, I mean, frankly, the quality of the propaganda isn't even good. I, I, look, if you're going to do propaganda, at least make it entertaining. And I find it's dull, boring, it's, you know, and just not even well written. Well, that's right. They'll put out one thing and then they all parrot it. It's a yeah, dog. It's like lazy box. propaganda. It's like work harder. We've got Andrew Tate here as well. Andrew, how are you? Andrew, your, your mic, is it working? You got to unmute bottom left corner. Can you hear me? We can, yeah. yeah. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good, friend. I'm in the middle of a poker game, but since this is the battle for humanity against the Satanists with its constant deception of the populace, I thought I would jump in and say hello to everybody. Your thoughts, hello. Andrew, we had, we had your brother on earlier, Tristan come on earlier. Your thoughts on Alex Jones being back on X? I'd rather hear his thoughts on Elon Musk being the biggest maverick of 
the last 500 years. I'm not kissing ass here. Elon, you, I mean, you're, you've got big ones, man, on every front. You are literally overturning the entire power structure. I was just going to say this and let Andrew get in, but I, have, I just want to say this while you're here. I, I mean, you are literally changing the entire paradigm and you've definitely got the system scared. And, and so everybody needs to support X. Everybody needs to support the sponsors on X. I personally am doing all my Christmas shopping this year with all the great gadgets and stuff that are on X. But I'm going to shut up now. But I would imagine they're talking about Alex Jones. I'd like to hear Andrew Tate talk about or ask questions to Elon Musk. Yeah, well, Alex is certainly a, a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. And I'm extremely happy he's back. I've celebrated that publicly. But Alex nailed it. Elon is taking the biggest risk here. It takes unlimited energy to propagate lies. You have to continually repeat them and you have to continue to try and falsify information and hide the truth to keep lies afloat. And this simple purchase, you call it simple, the purchase of a simple website has literally cracked the matrix in real time. And it becomes extremely difficult now to run the psyops they were previously running and enslave the populace, which is their primary goal. So Elon is a hero, absolutely. And the risks you are taking, Elon, I don't think many people at home actually understand the gravity of the risks you are taking because your ability to speak freely is heavily leveraged against your insignificance. You're only allowed to speak if nobody listens to you. And if you get big and people start listening, they're going to come at you hard. And I think I'm not completely versed, but from what I understand, Elon's already suffering the lawfare tactics, which they're going to do. They're going to keep pulling out the hat to try and slow him down or oh oh andrew let me interrupt before i forget i don't give any attention the same law firm that came after me with these pr firms you've just dropped out i think alex you just dropped out anyone else can you yeah no, i think no, he got a it's call now you got a call yeah go ahead alex there is a three-letter agency running this not all of them but let's just say it starts with a c and it ends with an a sorry go ahead andrew yeah absolutely and there's liberal ngos which will sponsor agents of the matrix they'll sponsor females to end up in a house party and then lie to try and then put you in a romanian jail cell and get you sitting with the cockroaches in a dungeon. And it's a very scary world where you get to a point where you're t only time trying to tell the truth and they're going to punish you for that using endless lawfare. And this battle has only just begun, but the matrix has truly cracked now. And it's going to be extremely hard to lie to us like they did before with X the way it currently is. And I think it came at exactly the right time. I almost, without trying to sound pessimistic, there was a point where I kind of felt like I was losing hope. You couldn't tell the truth about anything. Everything was a lie. Everything from head to toe was a lie. And they're trying to lock us all back in our houses again. And we can finally talk about it. It's truly heroic. And Elon's taking massive risk. And the respect I have for him for doing that is, is enormous. Absolutely. I mean, this is what happened. I'm going to shut up. So I want to hear from Elon. But this is so historic. Elon Musk's courage, and it's true, I'm saying, has broken the back of the globalists. They'll, they'll never be able to turn this around again unless they have a nuclear war. We, we, Elon Musk has broken their back. Yeah. Well, I guess some people are afraid to die, but I am not. That, and you know what? It's kind of crazy because I was talking to someone the other day and I was explaining. They were asking about my seizure, how they took all my houses, all my money, all my cars, blah, blah. And I said, you never truly own anything on this earth anyway. You can have a piece of paper that says you own it. But if you piss off the government structures, they just get a judge to stamp a different piece of paper and you no longer own it. The only thing you own is your soul and your integrity. And this is the one thing they cannot take away from you no matter what they do to you. And that is the best feeling on earth. It doesn't matter if... You can sell your soul to the devil and repeat what they want you to say, but then you truly own nothing. And yeah, I think I that agree. as history books look back on this pivotal moment when X was finally freed and the information of the world could finally be spoken freely, I really do believe we're on the right side of history. And if you were to ask me if there's anything worth dying for, it would be for the freedom of humanity and to be on the right side of history. So I agree with you absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, well, I'm just generally in favor of civilization and the furtherance of civilization. And I think we should always be concerned that we can regress as a civilization. And if you study history, just you, you just see the, the arc of, of one civilization after another as the civilizations rise and fall through history. We've been in a period of civilization rising very rapidly, but we should be concerned that it, it may, we may be cresting, we may subside. And there are, I have to, there are many times where I've, I get late stage civilization vibes, you know, and I'm just worried that maybe we're cresting as a civilization and have set it for a fall. So, yeah. Well, I agree with you because I truly believe, and a lot of people have ever said this before me, this is not original idea, but I think as AI and machines and tech increases, a lot of people are going to be deemed useless by the overlords. And then you have to sit and decide what are they going to do with all these people who have hopes and dreams and they want healthcare and they want a garden and they want a house to live in, and they don't want to be treated like cattle. They're going to become extremely inconvenient. 
So I don't think many people at home understand that this war cannot be avoided. I've had a lot of people who understand why they threw me in jail in Romania and understood I've done nothing wrong. And they said to me, why do you take up this fight? Why you don't just dis delete your Twitter and disappear and drive a Ferrari all day? And I explained that this war cannot be avoided. You're either on the front line and you're fighting for something or you're sitting waiting to die. You're waiting for the Mongol horde to come over the horizon and chop your head off. There's, no, I totally no agree. With it. And just to throw this in there, if you read the Elon I knew you were doing great work. When I saw you six months ago at the World Government Summit, where they're all saying we're going to make everybody eat bugs and we'll make the decisions to put microchips in them, and you said, we don't want a centralized system. We want a diverse system. We want firewalls. And I don't agree with this Tower of Babel you're building. They know that we go through cycles, and they want to artificially create a great reset collapse, in their own words, to make everybody else poor, consolidate power, and they'll have a smaller type two civilization for themselves. And I think you're trying to build a type two civilization or even a type one civilization, I should say, for all of us. And, right. and you said we, we need to have a debate about, we need to have a debate about going interstellar. We've got to expand yeah. or we collapse. And Elon Musk is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, we, you don't stay in stasis. You either expand right. or you collapse. Yeah, exactly. You either grow or you, or you, or you collapse. You, you don't, the steady state is basically an impossibility. So you have to pick it, you have to pick, make a choice. Do you want to grow civilization or do you want to decline and collapse? And because you know, steady state is, it's not stable. So, and I say we grow and I say we expand and we, we have more humans and we become a multi class species in a space faring civilization and ultimately be out there among the stars. And I think that is the, the exciting, inspiring thing for, for the future, N not a declining human civilization that dwindles to nothingness and where humanity dies with a whimper. And that's the bottom line. I think it is the battle of people who believe in humans and humanity and want it to expand against people who are so selfishly going through the earth and so selfishly oriented that they don't care about expanding civilization. They just want to control the humans that are currently here. And, and Andrew, not, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Let me throw this caveat on it because I've read the writings of Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and the Club of Rome. They know we could easily expand. There's plenty of room, hundreds of billions of own galaxies. They know that this is just a seed that's going to not just grow into one giant oak, but an entire forest, an entire universe. And so they want to shut everybody else down because they can't build a competition. Elon Musk to come out of the general public. They want a global tyranny so they can direct it and control it so that they direct the expansion. And we can't let that happen because they literally talk about Agenda 20, the official UN plan, a 90% world population. So we need to go with the Elon Musk plan. And that's why I tell people that get upset. They go, Elon Musk is involved in every advancing technology. The globalists are pushing that too. Well, technology is like a gun. It's whose hand it's in. And so we need the gun in the people's hands, the gun of expansion, instead of in the globalist hands. And so just because Elon Musk is on the cutting edge of every technology, don't fear the technology like some troglodyte. Fear us not being in control of it. And Elon is saying we need it to be an expansionary human explosion of competition and freedom, not some new dark age with a tiny breakaway civilization that's only working for itself. Sorry, I'm ranting. But no, but you're completely right. Because if Elon doesn't push these boundaries, they will push these boundaries. And once they have the sole control and the monopoly over such technologies, it's over for all of us. And I don't think most people understand. It simply is the humanistic view against the death cult view. And there's people in the world who have yes. no interest in, they have no interest in growing humanity, no interest in advancing the species as a whole. Their interest is in power True. and control. And all they want to do is have absolute power over the people that currently exist. And you can talk about all the perverse reasons they want to do those exact things, but it's truly scary. And all the people at home who don't really understand the gravity of this fight, they seem to think it's right wing, left wing. Hot yes, exactly. Don't think about it the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, it's a couple of legs here. You're totally, exactly. This right, left, it's the wrong way to think about it. It's the, the sort of the extinctionist versus the pro-humans. And once you see that it's extinctionist versus the human, the pro-humans, then it becomes very clear. So Elon, when are you going to, I know you got a hundred irons to the fire, but I've really, when you talk about, we need to create a, a plan B for humanity. Well, that's really that's plan, not plan B. B. It's, uh, I mean, I think an alternate master plan because the global is oh. control right now. You're trying to rest control with us helping. I mean, when are you going to put out your battle plan or are you already putting it out of pieces? No, I mean, I mean what I'm saying is that actually, I think we, we should expand humanity. Like basically we should have basically more, more kids, you know, population should increase and, and we should become a, a multi-planet species and, 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 you know, make life multi-planetary, build a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. And then ultimately, you know, this will be long after I'm dead, 
probably, but well, almost certainly we can go to other star systems and go out there and I don't know, maybe we'll find some long dead alien civilizations. And I'm, I don't think we want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations that never got beyond, it, you know, its own planet. I mean, we got to, you know, you know, the aliens are going to think of that. It's like, we, 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 we got to make a good showing. Team human. Well, Let's yeah, go. And that would, absolutely. And that would be key. certainly disappointing. But it's essential. And truthfully, it's so amazing we even speak about these things. Only two years ago, you couldn't even speak about these subjects. But it's so pertinently obvious to anyone who pays attention. And it is scary. And expansion and humanistic views are certainly the way to progress. And it has to be done. There's no other way. Just like a business. Just like you guys said, if you stand still, you die. And uh, it takes a few brave people to to break the matrix. You have to break the dam. And I think bravery is so important because it puts a crack in the dam and it shows that if there's people out there brave enough to risk getting canceled, risk yeah, really? law, risk lawfare, then it's going to inspire that's bravery that's amongst fair. the rest of the populace. And it becomes extremely hard that's to lie to brave. And, and I think that's one of the largest pandemics of earth today is bravery. And when I say bravery, I don't mean that in any kind of negative connotation. Bravery is being full of love and loving the people around you and sticking up for your community and loving where you live and loving your country. And it's brave to do those things. And it's love. What are the globalist teachers? Children are bad. We're ugly. Humans uh, create you know, all this racial division. They want us to hate each other. So we just yeah. give up, roll over, so the globalists can have the future. I would just yeah, like no, to I say think here. The globalists are, are short-sighted, too, because the, the, the thing is that you can't really separate yourself from civilization. So I think those who are sort of advocating, like, like it's really, I think it's just logical to be pro-civilization. You don't actually necessarily have to be altruistic. You just have to think long-term and say, obviously, you cannot exist in a good way without civilization. I mean, just look at, watch one episode of Naked and Afraid and see how much you want to go live in a forest by yourself. We're, it's, we're it's, in a very, it's not very... We're in a super pivotal moment now. And the reason we're in a pivotal moment is because the machines cannot do the policing as of yet. My brother and I often True. talk about how bad COVID would have been if they had Terminator machines. You didn't have your mask on. You couldn't even appeal to the empathy of the person who knew how insane it all was. As soon as the yeah. machines control the policing, it's absolutely over. And we're not that far away. So we're in a very pivotal period now where the bravery that's required to resist the globalist oppression has to happen now. Soon the technology I will exist and it's I over for everybody. We are at critical crossroads right now in the entire future of the human destiny. And, and I called it plan B, but I mean, Elon, what do you call it? Just an alternate plan for humanity? Because we should have a debate because, because the Black Rocks and the globalists are right now in control. If they were 100% control, you and others felt rested, but maybe they're in 80% control. They're losing control very quickly as people discover what they're doing. But what, what would you call the debate and discussions about a pro-human future? Just team humanity? Yeah, team humanity. Absolutely. That sounds like, that sounds good. But, I, you know, I think, like, something that's, that, that is really important is, like, you just literally have to have kids or there's no next generation. Alex, do you, do you have kids? Yes, I do. I'm not as prolific as you, but I wish I was. It's the best thing in my life. I have four. Okay, great. And Andrew? I do a few. I won't let you down, Elon. I'm coming. I'm okay, coming good. to take over your title. I'm coming to take over. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You know, I, I'm okay. going to use my... Good looks for something. Well, I think, I, we, I think we ought to encourage people to, to you know, have kids. And, 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 and this just... is the bottom line argument. This is what is so important. We just talked about how the globalists are ultimately selfish and only care well, about... Well, most of the globalists don't have children. And yeah, of yeah, course, but, because but, they're right. selfish. Here's the thing. You, you, guys, you guys are all attacking the globalists. But if you ask a globalist, like I have friends who would, I would consider globalists. If you ask them, their ideologies are aligned that they believe that somebody living across the world is just as valuable as somebody who lives in America. And I know, you know, there's oh, they've already enslaved the third world. And then that's not how everybody who you would categorize as no, you're right. there's a lot of useful no, idiot global not... globalists at the top are depopulationists. That's oh, their so, so, so maybe if you want to look at the top, you can say globalists at the top. Some of them might have that view. But, you know, if you just talk to an ordinary person who views themselves as a globalist, they're not saying, oh, you know, I'm evil. I'm, they're not an evil person. They just have this belief that every, every per human being around the globe is equal. That's I all would call that saying. an internationalist. So, That's an internationalist. A globalist wants one world government run by corporations. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you can label them differently, but I think if you talk to somebody... Well, Henry Kissinger gonna... was a globalist. Vigna Brzezinski was a globalist. I'm not trying to be mean to you, but their number one rule is the earth is too small. We can't expand. We've got a bean count and put everybody on rations. 
we've got a social engineer and in the normal human program because humans are failed. They want to turn us into factory farm humans. Those well, are a lot of survival. I'll, 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 I'll answer me, the question. Sorry, guys. If I, if I can just say, like, some of these titles are a little confusing. If, some, someone's, if say, someone's an internationalist or a globalist, I, I think where what can achieve some disambiguation here is to say, like, did this someone have as an axiomatic belief that there are too many people on the earth or do they not? Do they have, do they believe that the earth can sustain the current population or do they think it cannot? Now, the, the reality is earth can actually handle a, a human population probably 10 times larger than the current yes. population. Earth is actually very sparsely populated by humans. We only see density because if we're in a, a dense urban environment like New York or, or Boston, London or something like that. But if it's like, here would be like a good test. If you took a plane from LA to New York, and you try to drop a bowling ball and hit somebody, you, your chances of success are basically zero. You, you'd have to drop 10,000 bowling balls, maybe. Yes. You, you just, and, and I'll, I'll tell you sort of something that, that may scare people a little bit, is that th there are thousands of objects falling onto Earth from space all the time. But how often do you hear about someone actually getting hit? By falling right. by meteorites. Absolutely. If there's one known case of a woman at her house getting hit by one. I, I, Elon, yeah. I would just respond to Ed actually for a second, because again, when it comes, I want to, I think it's good to get a good counter view here. I think that there's two different things going on, Ed, and I know what you're, I know what you're trying to say. There's a separate point about your obligations, right? So you can, and I believe a lot, everything has been said about the importance of expansionism for humanitarian, for humanity being pro civilization and expansion pro human race to win. That's like a separate axis, though, from saying where are your obligations where you are, right? So we talked about procreation and family. Then we talked about the nation. Well, look, I'm, I have two kids. As a father, my moral obligation, I believe, is first and foremost to my family. And then let's say as a president, my moral obligation is to the citizens of the nation that I lead. And then you can worry about hunger in the Congo or whatever else needs to happen in the Darfur or in other places. And so I don't think that you're saying necessarily that life- Charity begins at home. Charity exactly. And that's home. not saying that life abroad is any less valuable inherently. And so when you say like the globalist view is that all it's saying is that all life is equal wherever it is on earth. It's not like I think the view, an alternative view is countering that. There's also just a separate place in terms of where you're situated, where's your obligation? Right is as a father, it's to your family. As a president, it's to your country. And just because you believe that's the hierarchy of your obligations means somebody else is a leader of one of those other countries, and that's an obligation that they have too. But that's like a different discussion. Well, the neoliberals, yep. they, the neoliberals, in their own PR, they're the ones doing the worst things on the earth. They just say, "Oh, we want global government because we want to give Africa's representation." Then they lock them down for three years and starve thirty million of them to death, and then organize them to flood us is a political underclass. This is cold-blooded Henry Kissinger, State Department Memorandum 200. I mean, yeah. it, it got I, 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 it, it, it's not black and I white. I think it's two right? different conversations. Wait, what is, but can, can what, we just, is, I'm sorry. Just, black go, ahead, Andrew, go ahead, Andrew, and then we'll go to Dave. Andrew. Okay. What, what, what I do believe is black and white is simply, if you read a history book, you'll see the worst things that humanity have ever done have been done with good intentions. That's what's so bad about evil acts is that people Rope think they're doing the right thing. And that's the most dangerous thing about it. And this idea that they look at all human life as sacred and all the same, I actually disagree. I think the reason they will prioritize people in a third world country, for example, you'll say it's because they see us as equal. I think it's because they see us now as spoiled and annoying. They don't like that we need pensions and living space and healthcare. They simply want slaves and a robot class and they'll do anything it takes to get it and they'll get it from anywhere they can. And when someone comes along and says, well, my intentions are good, I'm not interested in that because you can name any Holocaust or any atrocity in, in history. The people didn't think they were the bad guys. They often thought they were the, the good guys. And I guess the easy way to look at life is you want, you want to be having as many children as possible. You want to pray other people do the same and you want those people to enjoy freedom. And anyone who's coming along restricting speech, restricting access to certain things, restricting movement, restricting, all they're doing is trying to restrict so they can control. And nobody in a history book ever who did that either was the good guy. I think it's very clear to see who's on the right side of history and who isn't. And I advocate freedom for everybody. If I had disagreed with absolutely everything Alex said, I'd still be glad he's back on, on X. And these people can't even handle a different opinion. Do you think they're going to allow the people of a different opinion to them to share water or share food or share anything else? once they? And the reason they don't want another opinion is they want to misrepresent what Elon Musk or Andrew Tate or Vivek Ramaswamy or any of, I'm telling you, they want us silenced so they can lie about we, what we said. Yeah. I, quick, I agree quick, with you. I have, I, a, I, I have I a quick Jackson, I'm going to go to you right after uh, Dave. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying, I, I agree that with you there. I think that 
a lot of the media and a lot of these platforms do want to silence voices because they want their voice to be heard louder. So yeah, I, I definitely hear you there. I, I definitely don't, I definitely, as when it comes to globalists, I think, you know, it's not black and white. You're not either a globalist or you're not. I think people fall in between and they have, there's different reasons for why people might feel one way about one, you know, you could say globalist idea and another. So, so I, I mean, I, I don't like painting people like, you know, in, with a black and white pen because I, I feel that everybody falls somewhere in the middle. All Can I, I just know say is this, what? that there are people that want a corporate world government whose aim is depopulation, not giving the general public access to technology by lying about resources and literally saying carbon dioxide that plants breathe is evil and then telling us the world's going to end in 2030 and the ice caps are all going to melt and none of that's true. So our children basically give up on the future decide not to have children. That's all I'm saying. And Elon Musk is promoting an optimistic pro-human future that the science and evidence shows is real and that we need. Gentlemen, I have to yeah, go. Yeah, I just, I just want to be sort of, exactly. I want to be clear about yeah, my position. I'm super pro-human and I mean all humans. You know, humans in America, humans at Africa, got their phone, and everywhere else. Got their phone open in the bathroom. Yeah, that's Vivek, Vivek. That's your phone, Vivek. I'm not able to mute you. Vivek, go ahead, Elon. Sorry about that. So, uh, well, I hope you feel better. I now. feel great. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, you know, I'm super pro-human, like for Team Humanity here, and and I just think we want to make sure that people have a positive view of the future. And in, like, I think I, I encounter a lot of people who have actually very pessimistic conclusions about the future. And if you say, if you try to unpack that and say, where does that pessimism come from? And I think like, these are like, you know, good people, like they have good intentions. I think they think about things can come from is believing that the, that there are too many humans on the planet. This is false. Earth can easily sustain far more than the current population. And, but, but they've been told this thing and they believed it and it is false. And I'm very pro-environment, obviously. Bye, Andrew. I, I, I might've done more about more, you know, I'm certainly, I might've done more, you know, for sustainable energy than maybe any single human. So I, you know, I would consider myself an environmentalist, but I also believe in, in, in physics and reality and, and not sort of being alarmist about things. And well, I'll, something you said was really smart. And I've, I've seen the equations, I'm not a mathematician or rocket scientist like you, but we need the fossil fuels to get to the new technologies and trans is, you can't yes. cut them all off and then not have it to they're blowing up the bridge that gets them there. I would like, what I would I, like to say, my, my final point, I would like to say, I often get asked by people who follow me, they say, who do you think who controls the world? Who do you think the matrix is? And I use the matrix as a very simple way to explain that they purport a false version of reality that everyone buys into to keep your mind occupied so they can extract your body heat from you for the soulless machines, which are essentially, essentially the globalists we're talking about. And I try and say that I still believe that we run the world. There's a lot more of us than them. We still control the world. It's just down to what we will accept and what will allow them to do to us. And that's why bravery is so essentially and so essential and so important. And I know I can come across as brash with my message. No, but no you're telling, not. I'm telling 16 year olds. When I'm telling 16 year olds to go and get rich and buy a fast car and train hard and go to the gym, et cetera, because these young men are far less likely to blindly comply. And it's extremely important that they don't sigh off the next generation of young masculine youth. And, and that's why the still, system was scared of you, Andrew. Because you were doing a version of it to shock them out of it, to show them how to have a destiny, how to have desire, how to want to be into the future. And that's well, the same thing. In a different you're right. We still control the world and it's down to what we will accept. And it's going to take bravery and love. You need to love the people around you and love the human race and love the place you're from. And I just want to wrap up by saying that I would never kill myself. And if they put me back in that dungeon to starve, I hope you will all do your very best to get me out. Because I'm in a very we will, Andrew. Love situation. you. Can I just throw something out? Because I'm going to talk to Elon Musk here and everybody else. And this is surreal. Andrew Tate, Vivek Ramaswamy, this is crazy. John, I've got a friend I want to get on. We also have Mark Dice, who's really stood up for free speech. He's on the line. If he can get a question. I'm going to leave Alex, in. but I just want to say hey, welcome on Twitter. And I think there will be more truth than not. All else equal. So hail to the Thank truth. You, gentlemen. Take Thank it you easy, guys. Much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. I'll I have one quick question. So I guess the premise as to why Alex was banned so long was that you know, he supposedly lied about an atrocity and that goes against ex community guidelines. But that's actually not, that's not quite correct. The, at least, obviously this was before, you know, I acquired the company, but the actual reason for suspending him was he, he basically insulted a journalist. I, well, wasn't it like your purpose for keeping him Well, still he believed banned? that because the media had said that. Now he's learned that, right? I, I'm no, just going I, off I, of I, what I well, just looked at, I just looked at the, the logs for reason for suspension so it was a basically a third strike violation the third strike violation was insulting a journalist and yeah this is literally this is this was not my decision this is literally the twitter logs of the old 
people that used to run Twitter. This is what yeah. they were. I get. I guess what I'm saying is, like, under your leadership, though, the the suspension was kept in place. I remember you tweeted out because you're not going to bring someone back who lied about, you know, the death of innocent children. So if that's the case, then and and we're going to uphold things fairly and firmly for all X users. Can we end that? Like, if Alex or anyone else on this panel lied about Sandy Hook or an atrocity again, that they would also be banned again? You already answered that. Yeah, yeah. I've already he did, answered yes, that. He did, it, yeah. It, it and if that, okay, so, that, so if that is the case, if that is the case, we'll adhere to the law, and we will adhere to the law. That is what this platform will do. So if somebody says it does, does something illegal, then they will be suspended. If they do not do something illegal, then they, they may, we will try our best to avoid any kind of permanent bans unless someone does something fundamentally illegal. Um, Elon, I don't know. We don't. I know we're, 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 trying, we're just trying to stay true to the Constitution of the United States in, United, in America and and the laws of the country as decided by the citizens. Elon, in how, the how you, God, Alex. and Elon, way more interesting. And I just asked one question of Elon. Elon, it's great having you here in Texas. You're kicking ass. You're Texas through and through. Your whole spirit. We love you. Whatever happens with Trump down the road, should we change the Constitution so you can run for president? Would you ever think about that? I would like to stay as a technologist and and build rockets and electric cars and you know things that technologies that hopefully have a good effect on the world and advanced civilization. That would be my preference. I would not like to be president. So that would, I would just like to build things that are further civilization. That, that's, that would, smart, that's, I mean, that's a smart, I think that's a smart answer. Are you concerned if the deep state establishment, you know, it's not just one group is able to kill Trump or not let him run for office for the repercussions? I mean, are, are you optimistic for the future currently? Or just how do you feel about the election coming up? Well, I think it will not be a boring year. That's for sure. I think we're, it's going to be it's going to be eventful. I suspect. I don't know. You seem to be quite concerned that people will try to assassinate Trump, but I don't know. I, I obviously, and I'm against assassination generally. So you know, I guess if Hitler was alive, I'd be in favor of assassinating him. But you know, but you know, Stalin, you know, that kind of thing. I would you know, be too. Your attitude yeah, is um, <laughs> you can sell the world on freedom and humanity 2.0 and a new renaissance. The establishment will just step aside because our ideas are so good. Is that what you're saying? Look, I I think what I'm saying is that I think it is very it is very difficult to predict the future. That we're we're certainly going to have a very contentious election and and perhaps some contentious elections worldwide. The X platform will strive to be as as truthful as possible about what's going on and to you know that's going to be the goal. And, you know, SpaceX is going to build rockets and Tesla is going to build cars. And as for what will happen, in, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think, man. Is there any big... 2024 is going to be quite the encore for 2023 is my suspicion. I know you've talked about incredible jets you want to invent, some other things. Is there any other big invention you've got on the drawing board in the back of your mind that you haven't announced to the world that you want to tell people about today? No. This would not be the forum for announcing any new products or technologies. I mean, that we, we do have, you know, the Neuralink chip, which I know some people might be concerned about, but th th that's really something that will take a, lo a very long time to, you know, be in any kind of widespread use. We've got the first use, the first patient will, will get a Neuralink chip. This is a quadriplegic and it will enable them to control their computer and their phone. And then, you hey, my know. My uncle was in a motorcycle accident and for and was about and he was having seizures for about to die couldn't even walk he got one it's not one of your brain chips but a brain yeah, chip yeah. and actually he, he can walk and talk and is happy now so yeah. that's not bad exactly so uh, i mean it's, it's the reg, the regulatory stuff on this is is, is very intense so the, but but the, for the first one will have you know you can think of it sort of like like a telepathy you, you can sort of control your computer and phone just by thinking so it's like it's kind of like telepathy and then the one after that will be, I don't know, we're just trying to think of a name for it, but you can think of it like blind sight. Even if somebody has lost both eyes or, or lost the optic nerve and is completely blind, we can actually give them some amount of, eye, of sight. Oh. Ultimately, I think high resolution sight, Jordi LaForge from Star Trek, you could actually see in, in multiple wavelengths. You could see ultraviolet and infrared and even see radar if you want. And, and by the way, people um, that don't know, Elon's not lying. Even in MIT papers, they've actually done tests. They actually, that's what they say, though, is I know you, the problem is just narrowing the site to our bandwidth. They say these people see everything, right? Like a full spectrum. Yeah, you, you can have a, it's a point at which you have a camera. You can have a camera that can receive photons of, of many wavelengths. So you could see, you know, it, even in darkest night. And you could see ultraviolet, you could see infrared, 
like I said, you can even see radar if you want. So, wow. you know, it would be a kind of thing that would it's probably trademark something, but I think blindside is a cool name for, for it. Uh, it's like, beautiful. you know, yeah. Can we get one question from Mark Dice because this is the best interview ever. Mark Dice is a great journalist. He stood up for me the last five years when nobody else would. Mark, quick question for Mark, please. A comment, really, uh, just to reinforce to everybody listening, all the journalists, and thank you, by the way, Elon, for unmute, for unbanning Alex, for everything that you're doing, for the platform, for humanity. But I just want to reinforce, and I'm glad you retweeted this, Alex, the reason why Twitter cited Alex being banned, contrary to popular belief, is not because he entertained some conspiracy theories about Sandy Hook, as crazy as they were. And Elon just confirmed that the Twitter logs said this. He confronted Oliver Darcy, a public figure on public property, when he was working in the capacity of a journalist. And they cited that. But Mark, rapid. that's old news. Let's move on from Alex Jones. Well, we're talking thing. to Elon Musk. What's your question for Elon well, Musk? You know, I didn't see the Twitter file in the Twitter files. Can you release data about the choices that were made regarding the trending list? Because the trending list drives the news cycle, as you know, and they can create a self-fulfilling prophecy by manually inserting topics in there, getting people to talk about them. It becomes a topic. It becomes news. Did I miss that in the Twitter files or was that just not released? I would like more data on the manipulation of the trending list to manipulate the news cycles over the previous ownership. Yeah, well, there, there was a significant manipula manipulation of the trending list and uh, yeah, worldwide. I mean, you can just, I, I, I'd say like as a general rule of thumb, whatever conspiracy theory you've got about Twitter is probably true, even more true than you think it is. Are, uh, are you taking so precautions? Now, it, I think, I think the, the path to having a sort of a clean system is maximum transparency. So that's why like for community notes, the software for community notes is completely open source. You can see every line, the data for com community notes is completely open source. You can see the data, you can see the, the logic and you can independently create the community note conclusion. So you can tell right away if there's a uh, manipulation and there's always going to be some with these things, it is not black or white. It's, there's always going to be some degree of manipulation, but you just want to try to create, put as much sunlight on it. As I say, sunlight's the best disinfectant. You want to uh, have it be as clear and transparent as possible. This will minimize the amount of manipulation. So the more visible something is, the, the, the less it is in the shadows, the, the cleaner it will, will get. It will not be perfect, but it will be, be much better than, any, than something that is hidden. One other point, I hope that you're making precautions for the possibility of X being banned from the App Store, using it as a save to home screen type of feature as you know that's probably a very real possibility over the next 12 months but one other thing here and again appreciate your time i would also just politely ask that the infowars account and owen schroyer and rob do their employees of alex be on suspended they were lumped in with that initial suspension and maybe i think it's time i do believe cnn violated the terms of service of harassment they posted a video a while ago years ago showing them harassing a poor old lady because she shared something on Facebook that originated from Russia. And you can see on the house, they're showing up to her front yard. You can actually see her address, uh, the number plate right on her house, and that's still on Twitter. So, But Mark, let's not be... Yeah, exactly. No, I just kind of want to troll, troll them, give them taste of their own. Well, I, but anyway, I, mean, I do want to be clear that, you know, you know, doxing, which includes revealing the pseudonym of someone. So I want to be clear, sometimes some publications have claimed that revealing the pseudonym of someone is not doxing when it obviously is will result in at least a temporary suspension. We will be very reluctant to give permanent suspensions, but we will give temporary suspensions for any kind of doxing activity or anything that endangers the, the health of another person in a meaningful way. So, and so that it's includes like major publications. Like it does not matter who you are. It doesn't matter how big you are or small. Now, I should say this, this, there is one, we do have a UN exclusion rule, which is that if, if it's a major, if it's a head of state recognized by the UN, even if they say things that are you know, kind of crazy, which they do, then we don't suspend a head of state just for the Wait, same I reason that the UN good, allows heads of state to say crazy things at the UN assembly. But because we need to hear, we need to hear, we need to hear that. I, what everybody has to I was just going to ask, I guess you don't like Nikki Haley's idea of basically doxing everyone. No, I, <laughs> yeah, so that's crazy. The thing is that a lot of people obviously would face repercussions from their employer or, for, or from their government or, or from some organization if their identity is revealed. And that would, that therefore inhibits the public dialogue. So people, you know, there have been, been professors who've been suspended for just for favoriting things on old Twitter. They literally got suspended for just tapping a favorite button. This is, so you can say like, look, if a tenured professor can get a, get suspended from their job for just liking a, a post on the X platform, 
then obviously there is a there's there is some need for you know people to be able to post things anonymously. Otherwise, they simply will not be able to speak their mind. Absolutely, they're losing their job. It's anti whistleblower, but I just want to say this. Because I think the community notes is the best thing ever. Even if somebody says something really horrible, I think there should be some buffer zone to at least let them respond as much as they can before they get banned. Because what I see everywhere is the PR firms will say somebody has said something they didn't say. They create this woke mob response. Then the person's taken down. And then most of the time, it's not even true what was claimed. General? Yeah. We're, we're, we're very much going to err on the side of a freedom of speech, which is really just saying, you know, in America, we're going to we're going to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And that's that's what we're going to do and uphold the laws of the country. And, and if the laws are changed, we'll then change our behavior to match the laws. And we'll do so. And we also can only match the laws in other countries, because sometimes people will say, well, why don't you do demand freedom of speech in, you know, some other country in the world? I'm like, well, we don't make the laws in that country and if we don't adhere to the laws of the country. They will simply cut us off. And so. You know, we can't do more than that. So that's, we're basically... What, what about the other factors, you know, before going to General Flynn, you've got obviously laws, but you've got the, the revenue still running a business and you've got external pressure. How do you balance all these when fighting for free speech? Well, we're going to obviously favor free speech. I believe my action has been very clear in this regard that if it is a choice between money and freedom, we will pick freedom. General? Yeah, it's eight. Uh, thank you, Mario. And thanks for uh, for hosting this thing. You're doing a wonderful job. This is really a question for Alex and Elon and a statement. And I wish Andrew and Vivek were still on. You know, we've array we've talked about these different sort of array of forces between, you know, the globalists and the humanists or whatever the, the right descriptors are. Yeah, you know, what I would really like to see, and, and I would love to hear Vivek's take on it because he's such, I think he's such a wonderful debater. I'd like to know if there's possibility to uh, set up a intellectual debate between, you know, the Alex Jones, Elon Musk, Andrew Tate, Vivek, probably throw Tucker in there. Maybe there's Joe Rogan against a debate, an intellectual debate against the, the you know, the Klaus Schwab's, the Bill Gates's of the world. And then there's others. They won't do it because we'll kill them. Well, but, 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 see, I, well, but see, I, but see, I disagree. I mean, I, this is how we fight today, right? We are fighting in an information domain. We, we Andrew, uh, you know, I wish he was still on because I'd love to hear his take. Because, you know, Andrew starts to imply, and there's a lot of people that imply this, you know, we're going to move to something that we don't want to, a place that we don't want to be because of this. Frankly, what I see is a globalist takeover, and I'm all with you, Alex, and you and I have talked about this a lot. But what I would really like to see is an intellectual debate and, and a challenge. You know, I mean, otherwise, because 2024 is going to be for the United States, it's going to be a historically consequential moment in, in history. And I would prefer that we extraordinary session that I've been listening to for the last couple of hours here. And I would really like to hear at least Alex said you're because you're on and I think Elon's what do you think about setting up some type of intellectual debate or at least array the, the on, on X, you know on X yeah. while doing it through space. Well, on on like X. It. Yeah on X or or however, yeah, I would love to see them come on X to do this because well, well, this would well, be well, a wonderful. Well, thing. Would you, Alex? Would you be open, you and Elon? Would you be open for such a debate? Well, well let me just throw this thing. I'm shot with the bitter, and then Elon will take over. It should be on X. They had the last Republican debate, and it had like five million viewers. This is going to have fifty million viewers. We keep acting like dinosaur media even still matters. It should only be held on X, and and I would love to see it in this format or with an added video component to it. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're, we're challenge we're, we're, challenge we're their intellectual idea. I'm sorry. Okay. That's my point. That's my point. Yeah. We have to West challenge Coast, their intellectual arguments. Yeah, uh, and, 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 I, I agree with the general. What's the first debate? Hold on, I was just going to say that uh, from a future standpoint, we are working on adding video to spaces. So it, it'll just be a simple thing where you can turn video on or off, and and then whoever's speaking at the video will switch to them, just like if it's a, I guess, like a group call or something like that. Oh, wow. So that I think will help. You know, it's because it's, it's helpful to see people's body language as I speak. It's, it conveys more information if you can see their face and their their body language if they wish yeah. to. When when so, do you think when do you think that will when do you think that will? We're, I think we we're hopeful of we hope we hope to release that functionality before the end of the year, but certainly by early next year. Huge. Well, that's a big technology. Yeah, that's a big one. That's big. Yeah, okay, I've got I a CJ. But... That very big. So that's pretty, <laughs> frankly. But yeah, so it'll be cool, I think. Yeah. It's, it's just fascinating how far spaces. I remember being on spaces since the early days, free Elon. To see how far it's gone and, and to be able to have discussions like this. I don't think the audience understands 
there's never been any platform where, where voices from, from all sides, voices that were censored before, all speaking uh, in one place. Oh, let's be clear. I'll, there's I'll, been more innovations uh, since over than the exactly. whole thing put forth. I'll jump yeah, off, but I just want to say thanks to Elon. Since, since the rather embarrassing Ron DeSantis situation. It, it, like, <laughs> I mean, I really have to credit the, the, you know, the X team for making uh, massive improvements to spaces because it... it basically did not work at scale until a massive amount of work was put into it. It obviously broke rather embarrassingly in the Ron DeSantis uh, situation. And we didn't realize how fragile and weak it was. And since then, we've put massive work into making spaces actually robust and be able to have, you know, you can have at this point, millions of people listening simultaneously, which is quite Elon, difficult to do. Elon, I've never seen an interface that works this good. I mean, you've got a whole, uh, how you're doing this. And General Flynn did bring up the best question in the last two hours. So I'm sorry I was like getting so excited and interrupted the general. He's absolutely right. We should be challenging them to debate us. I, I agree with you, General. That's really a key point. I'm saying they're too cowardly to do Jack, it. How do we... Alex. Jack, your mic. I can't mute you, Jack. But you go ahead. Uh, just quickly, uh, before you continue, Alex, uh, Elon, I don't know if you remember, I think the first space you came on and we hit 100K live listeners and it broke. So it wouldn't show. Yeah. I don't we're know how you do it. 9,000 right, right now, 109,000. Yeah, I don't know how you do it, but I know that it's that we have to do it. We don't have a, I think we are in a place where we don't have a choice right now. I think the intellectual arguments on their side, I, I just think that they're going to fall flat and they don't really have a good argument. And Elon mentioned it early on about, you know, how much energy it takes to lie. I mean, it just does to lie to so many damn people, but we have to, Pick this fight. We ha it has to be intellectual. Our intellectual arguments are much, much stronger. And I just think we have to have the right type of people. And, you know, those people have been on here today and invite these people. I mean, if, they're, if they don't want to come, we call them out as cowards. I mean, wait a minute. Being poor and everybody. Wait a minute. General Flint, hold on a minute. I'm going to call you out right now. Eating bugs, drag clean story time, <laughs> open borders, World War Three. <laughs> You're saying that's not how you're saying their plan isn't wonderful. Hey, for a guy that has had to eat bugs, Alex, they don't taste very good. So, yeah, <laughs> I'll go one oh, step further. I think we should see a 2v2 MMA duel between Alex versus Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates. I Love think it. that'd be the real. I think Elon should call him out. It'll be bigger than the top UFC fight. If those cowards will show up. My God, it'll be their Waterloo. Elon, you, you know how the media works. Do you want to give? Do you want to call them out, and, and then you'll get that snippet all over the media? Well, I'm certainly happy to have a debate with Kashwab or others. You know, I think you guys may have been fo following what's going on in Davos more than I have, or and certainly more than the vast majority of people have. I think most people don't even know that there is a conference in Davos or the World Economic Forum. And I've only seen snippets, but you know, some of the snippets are concerning. And you know, I don't, I don't think we should have a sort of an unelected quasi-governmental organization deciding our future. That's, I mean, who said, who, who made them the boss? I, I, don't, I mean, do people even know that they're doing this? Like, they're, I'm, I'm not okay with some organization, you know, in, that I don't vote for controlling, you know, my destiny or that of other people. So then they, I don't know if they're necessarily fully controlling, but they certainly are influencing things. And, you know, and it's, you know, I just don't. I think an unelected world government is not a good idea. Well, but, but, uh, breaks the internet. On that point, CJ, I'll go to you right after for a question, then Suleiman. But on that point, how much control you, you kind of change it, whether control or influence? Because on one side, you've got people that say you know they control the world. Every decision is, is kind of influenced, or you know they make they're that decision behind the, the world. On the other side, there's the, the people making the argument that they're trying to do the right thing, and things are being taken out of proportion. It's all a conspiracy. Where do you think on that spectrum, in your opinion? Uh, we stand well i mean the, the original premise of the world economic forum was to have a some kind of forum where there would be interaction between government leaders and commercial leaders sort of heads of corporations and governments and, and that that there would be some forum for them to talk and, and like that original premise i think is not a bad one because right now you've got the un but that's just government to government and you've got you know a, a bunch of sort of individual situations where commercial leaders will meet with government people one-on-one, -on -one. but there's the, you know, the, the sort of the good part of the World Economic Forum is like, it, it's like, it's probably good to have some dialogue between commercial leaders and government leaders internationally. That's the, that's, I think the positive side. And that's originally how I heard about the World Economic Forum. And I was invited to speak there many years ago, which I was just too busy working. And I was like, well, I, I can't really go spend five days in Switzerland. I, I have I've worked to do in America. So then they and they weirdly wanted me to, to come talk there, but also pay them $20,000. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. So I declined the invitation. Um, and um, now it just, it just seems that since inception, 
perhaps this organization has gained a bit too much power and a bit too much influence. And I think it probably, you know, it should have less power and influence, is my opinion. You have a quick, quick, quick question. Uh, tweeted about the uh, imprisonment of the American Chilean Gonzalo Lira in uh, in Kharkiv, Ukraine yesterday. I'm curious if that imprisonment of an American for speaking his mind on YouTube and X has caused you to consider further support for Ukraine, albeit through Starlink or other means. And also unrelated to that, can you provide any updates about Starlink for Gaza? Yeah, I mean, I generally think, look, I understand that if somebody, if an American citizen is in another country and violates that, that country's laws or what those countries' laws, even if their actions would not violate the laws in the United States, that person would then be put in prison. But in the case of Ukraine, the United States is providing an, a vast amount of aid to Ukraine and the United States government has an obligation to protect its citizens. And so I, I think even if one disagrees with what, you know, that I guess YouTuber or journalist, depending on your perspective, what they posted, I, I feel uncomfortable sending massive aid to Ukraine if they're putting American citizens in jail for doing videos on YouTube. That's not cool. And it's like, and it could say like, okay, well, yeah, but Ukraine has the sovereignty in, in their country. It's like, yeah, but they don't have a right to our money as well. So it's like they don't have a right to our money and support and to, to imprison and mistreat American citizens. Well, well that's right. right. Look, I'm a dog in the fight, Russia, Ukraine, it, it's, a, you know, an old ancient fight between the two countries that's been going on for a thousand years. It, it's a Slavic civil war, but Ukraine is arresting the Orthodox Church. Ukraine, even the mayor of uh, Kiev has said Zelensky is becoming a dictator. So all I'm saying is this black hole we're feeding hundreds of billions into, we should at least be able to debate it. And if an American journalist is critical, he doesn't deserve to be put in a gulag. That's very dangerous. I agree, Elon. Uh, as for Starlink for Gaza? Yeah, and on, on the Starlink for Gaza front, I mean, obviously that, that, that place is, is currently a war front next level. So the in order for Starlink to be used in, in Gaza, terminals have to be brought in and they have to be you know, used in a way that where it is, where it is, there's a high degree of certainty that they are not used being used for any violence. So now it, there are only really two ways to get into Gaza. One is through Egypt and the other is through Israel. So it, it, if there was like, you know, a situation where say Egypt was willing to let stalling terminal in and that we could have very high certainty that the terminal would not be used for yeah. any kind of military purposes or, or for violence. Then, then we would support that. Egypt has not stepped forward to the best of my knowledge in that regard. And and obviously we're not gonna be played for fools here where you know if an organization would perhaps pre pretend to be using Starlink for peaceful purposes, but then actually use it for violent purposes. We'll, we will basically ask for a web time on that thing 24 seven. And, and if there's the slightest concern about it being used for violent I mean, so it, would, it would be turned off. So, so that that's the situation there. I mean, it was a very difficult situation, and I, you know, I am sympathetic to Israel, but I'm I also, you know, I'm sympathetic to civilians in in, in Gaza. So I'm pro human, to be clear. And yeah. you know, so Elon, it's, it's, it's just like here's the deal. I'm not pro Russian. I'm not pro Ukraine. I hate the war. I'm pro all of them. I agree. But when you learned that they were using Starlink to rig up robot boats to blow up battleships when Russia said they were going to launch nukes if they did, you didn't sign up Starlink to be a weapon system. It's very fair to say it's my company. It's my company. Well, yes. To be clear, the, the Crimea and the, and the sort of sea around Crimea was a an officially sanctioned area by the United States. And we were not Actually, the, so the, the Starlink cells were not turned on in, in Crimea, in the area around Crimea, because of U.S. law that would prevent us from doing so. The, the, there was a Ukrainian attempted attack on the fleet in Sevastopol, and I got an emergency call saying like, hey, we need to turn on the cells ar ar around Sevastopol. And I'm like, well, that's currently a U.S. sanctioned zone. We would need permission from the U.S. government to do so. And in fact, I don't, and it would also mean that we are directly complicit in, in an attack on the Russian fleet directly. This is, it wouldn't be, there's no plausible deniability here. Now, if, even though I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of, of President Biden, but if President Biden had called and said, you know, I, as the, you know, you know, as the president of the United States, I'm asking you to turn the, the cells on, I, I would have done so, but we did not get any such call. We were only called by the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian government is not my boss. So, you know, it's like. And so they, we, we can't, like, it would actually be illegal for me to turn on Starlink cells 
at the request of a foreign government in a, a territory sanctioned by the United States. That would they were setting, they were setting a violation of U.S. law. So it's like, well, they were setting you up like it's, it's, by a pick. Yeah, it just, it, it, but, but the, the media misrepresented it as I turned off the cells. This is not true. They were never on. And if I had turned them on, I would have broken U.S. law and I would need an exemption from the State Department and ex express written permission from the president in order to do. And that's why Blinken. Yeah. So, and I, I do think we, we need to be cautious about escalating that war and we need to find a path to peace and, and, and not have, not sacrifice the, the, the flower of Ukrainian and Russian youth ultimately for nothing, for a few miles of territory, which is currently what's been going on for the past year. Even Even with the question. Let me go to CJ and I'll go to you. Let me go to yeah. CJ and I'll go to you right after. CJ? Mario. Mario, thank yeah, you. Laura, Laura. Thank you yeah, so much. Ahead, CJ. Yeah, thank you so much, Mario, for hosting this. My name is CJ Pearson. I'm a 21-year-old conservative activist, and I currently work at Prager University. And General Flynn made a really important point a little bit earlier about how Twitter has made it super accessible for conversations like this to happen, debates and discourse. And Alex, I think, also made the point earlier that if you look at the debates and the viewership that they've had, you don't really see them reaching all that many young people via traditional cable channels. And one idea that conservative activists like myself have had, different Gen Z conservative influencers have had, is having a Gen Z moderated debate or town hall with the Republican primary candidates and exclusively streaming it here on X. What would you think about something like that? Do you think that would be a way for America's next generation to hear different ideas that they obviously aren't hearing currently on their college campuses? Well, actually, I, I don't believe in it, but I think that not doing it on the X platform, it, does, it makes no sense. It, things should be done on the X platform because it is the most widely accessible uh, platform. It, it is where you will see it has by far the most reach. The X platform has by far the most reach of anything. You know, that, you know, although like, I don't know, this conversation, I don't know, might top out at maybe a few hundred thousand people live, but it will probably go viral afterwards. And I don't know, probably have 10, 10 million people listen to it or 20 well, million. On the, on the um, mutiny space, we had 18 million listeners from memory. Yeah. No, so the, I mean, the way to think of this platform is that there, uh, on an average day, there are over 250 million people on the platform. That's an average day. Some, some days it's more like three or 400 million and a really crazy day could be like 500 million. So, I mean, we're... You know, at, the, at times we're starting to approach 10% of all humans who are online are on the platform. Well, Elon, so it's a very big number is, and Elon. we're not even, and we're obviously not active in China. It's not, we're, you know, X doesn't work in China. It actually works on international bones, but not domestic bones. And, and I believe it is also does not work in Russia. So, so that's, I think we, we do exceed 10% of all humans at times on this platform. So it seems crazy to ignore this platform because then you're just going to reach far fewer people. Well, well, Elon, bottom line here, the proof is in the pudding. You judge the tree by its fruits. You are the only massive platform that's open and free. People are hungry. It's exploding. This is the example for the world. And we're trying to stop war. We're trying to create a pro-human future. <laughs> this is what this is really all about. I've been very honored. Alex, Ali, before, before you're honored, just to give you an idea of how Spaces works. And just in the last couple of hours, that was meant to be an interview with you. Then Elon jumped on, Andrew Tay. His brother, we just had Vivek jump on, and Matt Gates just jumped on as well. Loved it. And that's, it's one, thing, one thing with space, you just never know who could come up. Matt, how are you? I'm great. I'm enjoying hearing Elon's perspective on adding value to all of our followerships and uh, allowing us to engage. Your thoughts on Alex Jones being back on the platform? I think it's great. Alex has been someone who's provoked a lot of critical thinking from policymakers and broad audiences. You know, of course, there are things that I'm going to say that would offend people, things that Alex would say that would offend people, but I think they'll just have to be offended. I think it's, I think it enriches the discussion to have Alex back. Yeah, I've got a few questions. My first question is we've seen extremely positive steps in terms of the return of Alex Jones. We've seen the return of Andrew Tate. We've seen the return of President Trump. And so X is definitely moving towards a free speech platform. My question is, when will we be able to get to a situation where it's completely free speech and it's just based solely on following the legal laws of the country. I know it's a process and it takes time, but how far do we envision this happening? How far in the future? Well, I, we're, I mean, I think we've made dramatic progress over the past year. You know, it's only been a year since the acquisition closed and it's been quite difficult to, we had to not just keep the wheels on the bus, but upgrade the, the bus whilst going down the highway. While well, Elon's cut out, Thomas Jefferson said, we will not be transported to a state of liberty on a feather bed. Is Elon back? No, I think he's might've gotten a call. No, you're back. Oh, okay, sorry. 
Yeah, I'm just saying it's been you know, quite difficult to keep the wheels on the bus and upgrade the bus while going barreling down the highway at 100 miles an hour. So that's kind of where I think. But I think we've made tremendous progress in the year. And I, and we'll, I think that progress, I think, is accelerating. So, and, you know, we, we keep cleaning up the code base and simplifying it, providing more transparency and providing more clarity and obviously improving freedom of speech and getting closer and closer to the law. And, and I just want to say with respect to the law, I am a strong believer in the law. So you'll, you'll, you'll sometimes read an article where it sounds like I'm some crazy maverick who just likes breaking the law. I, I, I am subject to so many laws, it might be hundreds of thousands of laws, maybe millions. When you think about Tesla and SpaceX and Starlink and all the countries that they're in and all the regulatory regimes and all the rules and regulations that we have to adhere to. And the amazing thing is how closely we actually ad adhere to the law and follow the law and do what countries believe is right and legal. And once in a while, in a very rare case, I might disagree with the law or regulation, but we will not willfully violate it. So, or, you know, so what I'm trying to say is I'm extremely law abiding. I, I totally agree with you. I don't know how you have the energy. People talk about Trump's energy. Your energy is insane. Where does your energy come from? Going back to being a child, did you kind of, because we know the universe is a loop or a figure eight. It doesn't just go in one direction. Did you have inklings of the big things you were going to do or when you were a child? Did you have any like foresight about what you were going to be doing? No, not really. I, I just, you know, I, I liked technology and like taking devices apart and fixing them and building things. And uh, I loved science fiction, fantasy, you know, like Lord of the Rings and Heinlein and Asimov and Star Trek and Star Wars and that's, and I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I liked it, like programming computers. I, I found programming computers to be intrinsically interesting, not because I thought I'd have a job. Actually, I didn't think I'd have a job. I know you can even make money writing computer software, but I was just interested in it in and of itself. So I'd program computers all night by my, you know, by myself, which is not, you know, it doesn't appeal to everyone, but that's, I think actually quite an unusual thing to want to sort of type strange symbols into a computer all night, essentially by yourself is a, well, not what most people want to do, but I did like doing that. And I also like, you know, hanging out with friends and stuff, but no, I didn't think this, any of this would happen. I'm just, I would say I have a philosophy of curiosity, which is, you know, trying to understand more about the nature of the universe and our place in it. And that's why I studied physics, not for career reasons, just try, to try to understand how the, the universe actually works and what has good predictive value. And physics is, has got very good predictive value. So that's why I studied it. Then give us pre your predictive value. Gut level, Elon Musk, the, I mean, this is like beyond any Hollywood movie where we're at right now. Does humanity survive? Gut level, you've got all these great children. That means you bet on humanity. Do we make it to the next level? And what is the next level? You don't need them? Sorry. While yeah. waiting for it. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, you, you need, one, one needs to think of the, the future as probabilities and not certainties. So then you know, any given action that we do can affect the probability of a good outcome. There, there are no certainties that I can determine, or at least I, I, I don't have a crystal ball that can. So we're us. changing the future. Yes. I think by our actions. We, we can individually take actions that, that improve the probability of a good future and the furtherance of civilization. And I, th I think we should, you know, take those actions and, you know, some of that we've got to have kids or they won't be a next generation. And we've got, we've got to, you know, educate them well. And I think, you know, like so no, don't hold on short, this let civilization. Me yeah. Let me ask this question, Elon, because you're obviously a genius. We're here talking to you right now. Don't predict the future. Be the future. Yes. The, the best way to, the best way to, to I think I'm scared you came up with this, but the best way to predict the future is to create it. Yes. And uh, I, I do want to, uh, Jason yes. Kalakanis is here and, uh, and they've started. Yeah. Let me go to Jason quickly, so I'll go to you in a bit. Jason, a quick question to you first. Uh, would you have Alex Jones on the All In podcast? Sorry to put you on the spot. Well, I have him here now. So would it be okay if I asked him? Three yeah, questions. but Elon's Alex. far more fascinating. Please ask Elon questions. Well, Alex. My first question for you is, I'm curious if you'd be willing to answer three questions about the Sandy Hook parents. Oh, great. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you now have your freedom of speech and you're here. So I think a lot of people are wondering what theory or evidence led you to believe <laughs> that was a fake staged situation. He's already answered these questions. Yeah, every time well, no, I we're here on faces for the first time, let's ask him. <laughs> no, he already I, answered I, this I like minutes ago. Yeah, let me Responding. ask you this. Let me ask you this. Everything I say is misrepresented. You'll say I'm saying it again. I believe it happened. And I'm sorry. And I apologize. And I'm done. Okay. And so what did you get wrong about that situation? 
Like what led you? Because you're you've investigated these situations many times, right? That's kind of what you do no. as a journalist or an entertainer. And so, what did you get wrong there? And then, Elon, what let real world question. harm did it do? Let me ask you a question. I respect Elon. I answered this question. I said it's probably the last time I'll ever talk about it. I'm not going to live in Groundhog Day. I believe Sandy Cook happened. I've been through hell over it. I was not the guy that first questioned it. PR firms blew it up and made it my identity. It's not my identity. My identity is human's future, team human. What Elon Musk is doing, I'm never talking about it again. That's your answer. Got it. Okay. So what would you do differently in the future, you know, when going after some conspiracy theory like this? And do you believe that when you go after these conspiracy theories, they can have real world harm? I.e., you know, your fans knocking on the door. Yeah, apparent. But yeah I get it. If I would comment on what people are saying on the internet, when well, something has 50 million views, I will be blamed for their questioning. So I'm very careful about that now. I didn't realize I had 30 million viewers a day back then because I wasn't looking at the analytics. But yeah, I've learned a lot of lessons that the media and PR firms will misrepresent what I'm saying to then attach themselves to me and play victim. So I'm not talking about it. I won't even say the name of it. I will say is I'm at X right now and it's blowing up and taking the planet back from humanity at real Alex Jones. People should follow it there and hear what I actually say. And I don't talk about the school shooting. That is not who I am. That's what PR firm. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Jason, I, I should say that the Sandy Hook issue was the first thing I raised with Alex. He did answer it at length at the beginning of this spaces the conversation. So I think you, you, you may not have heard the Yeah, the no, I, I didn't hear the start of it. I was alerted to this at the uh, towards the end. All right, I think the yeah, issue would go candidly. I'm not saying, I'm not coming to whether I agree or disagree with his answer, but I, it was the very first thing that I asked when I got on, on this uh, spaces conversation, just as it was the first thing that you asked. I think it's, the, it's you know, for people that, that, you know, care about whether there's sort of empathy and whether somebody has been, you know, cruel or mean or something, that's like the first thing they're going to ask about. And so that was the first thing I asked about. And it, it you know, it was answered or somebody can agree with that answer or not. And no but matter how many I answer it, it's never good enough because I'm that guy. I'm not what they said. I covered the internet questioning it. I've already said, I'm sorry, over 500 times, three or four times today, but it's always the same question. I'm not that guy, I won't even say the name of it. Yeah, I, I, I think people actually will eventually get tired of you answering the question. And for someone who started out that you listened to the whole spaces, they probably are actually tired of you answering the question, to be frank. I certainly am. Patrick, are you there? Patrick, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Fantastic. I, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment to make. The biggest thing is, and I saw, I heard Jason's question, and I know Alex answered it at the beginning with Elon, opening it up with him. Uh, I had Alex on, I don't know, Alex, it was a couple months ago or something you were on. We had a great exchange together. The best part about this is the following. I applaud Elon for, you know, the fact that, you know, just a few months ago, he said he's not going to have, he's not going to have Alex on. And then after seeing what the audience wants, the survey comes to 7030 and keeping that commitment for allowing Alex to be on the people who have different, strong opinions, who are humanists, who want to defend freedom of speech, defend the same rights that we have. We're finding each other. And I just want everybody to remember this. Go back to September of 2022. When Professor Galloway said, Elon is full of it. He's not going to buy it. He's toying with all of you. And then Elon bought the company, whatever the price uh, of the company was. Some said it was 50% more. It was a $20 billion company, $30 billion company. He paid the entire number. He didn't have to do this. If that purchase wasn't to be made, think about where America would be today. I want everybody to think about that part. It's been 13 months since then. It's pissed a lot of people off. The fact that, Elon, I applaud you for standing up to folks who... You're saying what you're saying to advertisers where what do you have to do? Be a slave to them. They have to constantly put that fear in you. We applaud you. You got a lot of people backing you up. Alex, it's great to have you back on. Pushing the envelope. You could be wrong. Everybody could be wrong. It's not like all of us are always right. We have the ability to be wrong. And when we are and people can challenge us and move on and, you know, then they can make a decision. Either look, I don't like Alex or I like Alex. Great. No problem. That's the freedom of, you know, you have to pick and choose to like somebody's views or not. But the biggest factor here is somebody had the courage to use their resources to buy a platform like this, to give everybody else the freedom to debate, to argue, to give their thoughts, to give their opinions. And then at the same time, if you're wrong, you admit to it. If you're not, you stick to your guns. But best part on what's going on to the world right now is we are finding each other. The fighters are finding each other. And that has got to be a very scary thing to people who oppose the concept of freedom of speech. So I have no question for Alex. I have no questions for Elon. I just wanted to jump in and applaud everybody 
even those who debate, even those who agree, even those who disagree, future looks bright. The right people are finding each other. And I applaud all of you. That's all I wanted to say. So Patrick, beautifully said, brother. Remember, and, and Patrick, Seth. I apologize for Sandy Hook on your show five years ago. That, I remember that. I remember that. Patrick, quick question for you then. that You've been here a few times and you've uploaded spaces and X. When is the show? I think you've got 2 million subscribers on YouTube. When will the X version launch? When will the X version launch? I've never had a conversation with Elon. We've never had a sit down. I totally support what they're doing. Right now, what we're doing is we're starting to upload uh, all our episodes on X as well as we're putting on other platforms. But the direction this is going with a few asks that was made where we can now watch the video on 2.0 speed. I'm a 2.0 speed guy. I like marks to speed the spot. it up. X marks the spot. X is it. No, I totally see it going that direction. But no, I mean, look, it's look what's going on right now. Look at this live. How many people are on right now? I don't know what the number is. Hundred and 118,000. 119,000 on a Sunday where I'm sitting in my backyard right now watching my four kids play soccer. And we're able to jump on and have a conversation like this. This is insane. The power of what's going on with this. This is uh, the future. I, I think this is just the beginning and the right guy is driving it. So future looks bright. Seth? Yeah, this question is for Mr. Musk and Mr. Gates. So during the 2020 election cycle, we saw a lot of people be either deplatformed or noted for making claims of election fraud. Now, at the time that those claims were made, there was no way of knowing they were true or untrue because they hadn't been litigated yet. So going forward, as we're coming into a new election cycle, Mr. Gates, is there anything being done legislatively or in the House to ensure that doesn't happen again? And the same question to go to Mr. Musk. Thank you. The strongest, I think, influence on that censorship regime right now is the Missouri v. Biden you know, litigation and the injunctions there that are being resolved. And so, sort of the public humiliation we've put some of the senior DOJ and FBI leadership through as they've had to fess up to the nature of some of these emails and contacts. You know, we've brought you know, the journalists that have been covering this, you know, Schellenberger and Taibbi, forward to kind of repeatedly try to set that deterrent. But I, I think that it's not just about elections. I mean, it can be about any number of the things that the federal government wants to control the four corners of discourse on. And you know, these are the people who would have like, you know, who would have banned Galileo. And yet when people want to share evidence or experiences or concerns, you can't have the Department of Homeland Security and CISA working alongside NSA and FBI on, on those projects. Otherwise, people start to fear that if they're not proactively censoring, that they run afoul of some sort of legal regime. And it's also sickening if you just track the extent to which uh, a lot of these se senior lawyers oscillate back and forth between big tech and the senior positions in our government that decide these things. So Republicans in the House should be taking a stronger stand. In my view, we should be putting riders on the funding for CISA and FBI so that you know anything that would occur there would be so clearly outside the law that it would draw sanction. But instead, we, are, we continue to govern by these continuing resolutions that don't gate resources away from that censorship. Well, actually, Congressman Gates, the, the fact you mentioned that uh, about the FBI and CISA, this has been the huge thing that's come out of the Twitter files. And it's, it was a two-way street. So while you're tracking what the government was doing in 20 vis-a-vis -vis censorship, really leaning on regards to the Hunter Drive laptop, which we released in October of 2020, this is actually a huge question for X going forward into 20, because Elon, you've said that you want to be in, you know, working in conjunction with within the confines of the law. But the question is, if that law is being enforced by the law enforcement agency of the FBI or the DHS, and then they come to X and say, these posts need to be censored, this information needs to be censored because we've determined whatever it is, you know, how does X make that determination? Well, if, 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 we, if we believe that something is, is not in accordance with the law, then we will ask a, a, a judge or jury to make a decision. Okay. We, we, don't, we don't have much of it. That, that is the best we can do. So, and, and I, I just want to- Just cut out again, you got a call. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just want to be clear that the X platform will aspire to be as neutral as possible. And, you know, that's, that, that's and to be as open and transparent as possible. I, I think we, we will be, I think we will achieve maximum transparency. I think we'll be, I think we'll be fully transparent, you know, hopefully by early next year, but we, I, we would, I'm confident we'll be fully transparent by the, by the time the, the, there is an election next year. So like, 
basically people will just see anything that is happening on the system and nothing will be hidden. That is the goal. Well, if those agencies though, the FBI, the DHS, et cetera, if they reach out to X, for, I believe they called it defensive briefings in 2020 regarding which eventually culminated in the censorship of Hunter Biden. If they started reaching out again, would that be something that you or the team, and no, I can understand if you don't want to answer now, but you would consider making public. We will be as transparent as is po as possible with, with that, you know, yeah. I, and frankly, if I think a government agency is breaking the law in their demands on the platform, I would be prepared to go to prison personally if I think they are the other ones breaking the law. Redheads and then Alex and Penny. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Josie. I'm the redheaded libertarian and X, and I'm a revolutionary historian, and I do outside media work at TimCast.com. I just wanted to jump back to X as a free speech platform. Elon had mentioned constitutional speech will be protect protected and there's some confusion as to what that constitutes, constitutional speech. So I, I just wanted to help kind of clarify that for some listeners who might have questions. So the speech and expression, which are not given protections in America under the First Amendment include incitement, defamation, fraud, obscenity, CP, fighting words, and true threats. The government does have power to make blanket regulations on speech, including time, place, manner. That's usually done in the form of permits. And when it comes to slander and libel, those are defamation adjacent and need to be proven as there's no such thing as a false opinion under the First Amendment, only a false fact. But many times by the time the due process is through, the damage has already been done. I mean, we saw that with the Me Too movement, particularly with Justice Kavanaugh. We saw that with Alex Jones, the Tates, Nick Sandman, Kyle Rittenhouse, where the kind of propaganda machine took over and, and, and truth was lost for a period of time. So when it comes to obscenity, that's the hardest constitutional violation to prove when it comes to the expression of that, because it's it has kind of a standard of, I know it when I see it. So there is something called the Miller test to determine whether something is deemed legally extreme. So I, I hope that helps. Yeah, we're not doing drag queen story time here. We're not calling for violence. We're not hacking websites. We're promoting freedom. That's why we're censored. Yes, exactly. Alex? Yes. Hi, I no, just Alex. wanted to know. You're good. Uh, I just wanted to thank Elon for his commitment to free speech, reinstating Alex. Of course, welcome back. And I just wanted to, I think it was Mark Dice earlier who raised this with Owen Schroyer's ban. I just wanted to note that it didn't have anything to do with the InfoWars thing. It actually had to do with the fact that he called for people to come to a rally and Media Matters actually did a hit piece and they said that it would violate Texas's social distancing order. So that's how they actually got him banned was through a Media Matters hit piece. So in response, Twitter 1.0 banned him. So I just wanted to get any thoughts on that. Well, it's the perfect timing. Elon, maybe you can also give us a, an update if there is any on Media Matters and why you decided. Yeah, M Media Matters is an evil propaganda machine. So I, I just generally, I'm against evil propaganda machines. And so we are suing them in every country that they operate. And we will, we will pursue not just the organization, but anyone funding that organization. I want to be clear about that. Anyone funding that organization will be, we will pursue them. So Media Matters is an evil propaganda machine that they can go to hell. I hope they do. So yeah. So I, I, I actually, I, I need to, you know, just step off the call at this point. So I just have some family obligations. Uh, I think it's been certainly a very interesting conversation. I suspect this will go viral. Probably snippets of it will go viral in a way that don't entirely represent the situation. I hope that anyone who reads about it or hears about it actually just it takes the time to listen to the entire uh, Spaces conversation. It will be saved. I suspect there will be probably many millions, if not tens of millions of people listening to the conversation. I, I just hope they listen to the whole conversation and not just uh, small parts of it. Um, Elon, I totally agree. Let me just say, thanks for reinstating me. I'm going to do the best job to not be misrepresented. And I thank you. And I thank you for the freedom you're promoting, the pro-human future. We're on Team Humanity. Thanks for spending two hours with us. Plus, and this has just been surreal. It's, it's really been amazing. So X is where it's at. Thank you, Elon Musk. You're welcome. Like I said, I'm you know very much in favor of supporting the in, you know, in, in the United States, the laws and constitution of the United States. And I think if we start you know eroding, if we erode freedom of speech, we erode the, the foundation of democracy. The bedrock of democracy is freedom of speech, and we must do everything we possibly can to protect that. Well, thank you, Elon, for all the time. And I want to thank this whole crew. I I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff at Real Alex Jones on Twitter. People should follow us there. And this has been the most epic interview ever. I love this new spaces. 
system. And it's just good to have my identity back to actually say what I actually said versus them misrepresenting. I'm not perfect, but God bless you all. And I really appreciate Elon Musk and everybody else that is promoting free speech. That says we don't have free speech. We have nothing. I appreciate it, Alex. And, and Benny, maybe you can give us a final word. I know you've been waiting for a while. Good to have you. Man. Oh, hey. Hi. How are you doing, guys? Big kudos, Elon. Thank you so very much for creating this space and obviously for believing in principle more than money. Jack, swagger Jack, to my question, I was going to ask about 2024 election integrity and government interference. So instead, I'll ask about Bob Iger. When you told Bob Iger to go fuck himself a couple times, are you asking, you asking Elon? Yes. Yeah, he's what? jumped off. So I was going to give oh, you the he's... final word to wrap up the space. Ah, yeah, he's jumped, he off. jumped off. And Alice oh is jumping gosh. off. Okay. Well, I mean, that was the moment okay. globalists got their giving into their intimidation and their blackmail. Go fuck yourself, New World Order. I was going to ask. I didn't but know but it was... it, nah, yeah, you just missed it. But to give you an idea of the space that we started off with Alex. You know, I messaged you yeah. not to jump on. You did. Then we had the Tate brothers come on. We Matt Gates, obviously. That's uh, Vivek, hey, that's Vivek, 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 the most who's trying to be patient, and uh, I was trying to be patient. I appreciate Patrick. it, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm, that was good to have just, you. Just like Patrick, Bet David, I'm here with my kids. So I'm like, I'm like Vivek. I'm not going to piss live on this, but uh, you might hear a crying baby. All right, good to have you, man. Good to have everyone, Alex. Your final yeah. thoughts on the space, man? It was pretty, pretty epic comeback to to X. I don't think it's pretty epic. It's way better than Alex Jones. It's humanity deciding. For our free speech is paramount. Those that try to not have a free speech are our enemies. We need to actually hear what we actually say instead of what we're told somebody said. Elon Musk is doing a superlative job. To everybody that helped get me back on X and this whole thing, this is historic. But the deep state, the empire is going to strike back. So I'll see everybody at Infowars.com forward slash show, band.video. We'll see a real Alex Jones on X. We're going to hear what I actually say versus what they claim I say, because you're adults. You deserve to actually hear what people are saying versus what they're told you're saying. So that's why this is so incredibly epic. So God bless you all and good luck. I'll see you at Real Alex Jones on Twitter. Please follow us there. Thanks a lot, everyone. We appreciate it.